Uh, welcome, everybody, and welcome to this lightning talk on SS Streaming. My name is Ronald Coppers, and I'm a senior SDE for AWS Game Tech. So before diving in, it's important to note that the streaming system within L3DE um, is not a monolithic system. It's actually built up out of multiple layers. Today, we'll be looking at two of them. At the very bottom is the file streaming layer, and that's responsible for bringing a file from storage, such as your hard disk, into memory. The SS streaming is built on top of that and takes that raw data and converts it over into an object that the engine understands, called an asset, through a process called deserialization. Now, to get a better idea of where we were a few years ago, I'm going to walk you through an example of what loading an asset looked like a few years ago. So typically, the asset manager will start by reading the file into memory and does that deserialization process, that process of converting it from raw data into an asset. But while it's doing this, it may encounter a dependency. So now another part of the asset manager needs to bring that into memory, convert it over, and then we can return to processing the original uh, asset. And this may happen a few more times, so uh, dependency C and D are brought in, and then finally the whole asset is ready and available to the engine. Now, a few years ago, we built an entirely new file streaming system, one that is optimized for modern hardware. But if you want to use modern hardware efficiently today, you need to do asynchronous operations. So this linear progression you're seeing on screen right now should preferably look something like this, where all the files are batched up and sent to the operating system so that it can read them as fast and as sequential as possible, while all the processing to do the deserialization happens in parallel on multiple threads. Now, that's possible to do, but it does require everything to be asynchronous, which can be a lot of work. So we wanted to look for ways to make this easier to do. And the way we found uh, to do that is to be to, is by reading the assets ahead of time. So before the deserialization actually needs have the asset, we already have it. It's a little bit trickier than you may think because for something like a level load, that, that prediction is pretty easy. You, you can record it once and then play it back. But for something like an open world game where players can run around and any asset can be loaded at any time, it becomes a lot more difficult to predict what the next assets are. What we do know, though, is that when you have an asset, there are dependencies. So imagine you have a mesh asset, and that mesh, in turn, will likely have a material asset associated with it. That material, in turn, has several uh, shader assets and texture assets, and all those assets are loaded you know, ne right next to each other because the mesh is loaded. And actually, we already record those dependencies. Uh, the asset processor um, does this. So in asset builder, you can specify these dependencies. And then later on, tools like the asset bundler use this uh, to determine what files need to go into a shipping game and what files um, are just intermediate files. So what we did is we took that information and optimized it and made it available at runtime. Now we know ahead of time what asset can be loaded. So this, the way this works is, say, you request an asset to load. So the asset manager gets that request, and the first thing it does, it goes to what's called the asset catalog to find all those dependencies and all the child dependencies. It compiles a list of these assets and then revisits the asset catalog again to get a list of all the files associated with that asset. That whole bunch of files are then sent, then sent to the uh, file streaming system, which will look at it and, and reorder them so that they are loaded in the most uh, ideal order. In the meantime, the asset manager will have to wait for those reads to complete, uh, and it also has to wait for uh, all the dependencies on a single asset to complete. Once those two criteria have been met, um, the asset manager will start a new job on a separate thread to deserialize the data into memory. And then finally, when that job completes, it will signal back to the asset manager that it's ready. And at that point, the asset is available for use by the engine. And any other assets that are waiting on that dependency on that particular asset um, can now continue doing their loading process. So let's walk through an example. Here's the file again that we saw earlier in the presentation. It's asset A and the three dependencies, B, C, and D. And we're going to bring that into memory, and we're going to then make it available to the engine. 
So remember the order in which things are loaded um, can be different um, and the, the length of how long it takes to do conversion and that kind of stuff can differ. So this is a little bit simplified, but what could happen is that uh, the file streaming system decides to bring in uh, SSD into memory first. And once that's completed, it can now instantly go to asset C. It doesn't have to wait for some partial deserialization to happen. It can instantly jump and start loading asset C. In parallel, the asset manager has kicked off that job um, that does the conversion. And this will continue. So file streaming just happily chucks along and brings in asset B. Conversion keeps happening on separate threads. And that one, asset that that the one thread that was working on asset D is now ready and signals back to the asset manager, and SSD is available for use in the engine. And this keeps going. So now asset C is ready. However, once we reach this point in um, the loading of asset A, something interesting that happens. Now the asset manager will make asset A wait. The reason for this is, is of the three dependencies it has, only two of them are currently available to the engine. Asset B is not ready, so the asset A has to wait. Asset B now becomes available. And then finally, asset A can be fully converted, at which point it's now available to the engine to be used. So how can you maximize your performance for uh, uh, asset streaming? So the first thing you really want to pay attention to is when you add a new asset type to the engine, uh, look at the file size. If it's a really big file, consider breaking it down to smaller pieces. The reason for this is that if it's a single big file, you have to read the entire file in memory, and then there's a single job that has to do the deserialization. However, if you break it down to smaller pieces, what happens is that while parts of the file are being read, parts are being converted on multiple threads. So overall, you're going to see a higher performance from this. However, there are diminishing returns because issuing a file request to the operating system and starting a new job for the deserialization do have a little bit of overhead. So if you make your files too small, well, ultimately you end up losing performance. So experiment with this a little bit, but it's worth a worthwhile experiment. The other thing to pay attention to is that it still pays off to, to look for points where you are waiting a long time. If that happens, if you spot those, then you do want to do asynchronous loading. In particular, there are two places you want to watch out for. First of all, if you have a root asset, so in the previous example, that will be asset A, or when you bring in something like a mesh, those are assets that are typically not directly loaded by the asset manager, but are requested by another part of the engine. That other part of the engine, well, if it's not asynchronous, it has to wait for all the, the asset and all its dependencies to come into memory. So if you're seeing that you're waiting a lot of that, it may be beneficial to turn that particular uh, request into an async operation so that that thread can do something else in the meantime. The other place to watch out for um, are these weight dependencies that the, the, or the weights that the dependencies add to their parent. So if you're seeing that you're holding up the pipeline a lot, um, it's still advisable to move those dependencies to be asynchronous as well. Because when you do that, the parent doesn't have to wait for that anymore, and it can bring, them in, bring the asset into memory quicker. So what do we want to do for streaming in the future? Well, I talked about streaming having multiple layers, um, but it's a little bit of a fib because we actually haven't implemented much of that yet. Uh, the only thing that we have so far is that we took the levels that were uh, traditionally um, not supporting any form of streaming and we moved them over to prefabs. Since prefabs are assets, they support asset streaming, and we've seen quite an improvement in uh, level loading from that. But we want to add more advanced features to that, like the high-level streaming schedulers to allow uh, the world to be divided in individual tiles and load those tiles on demand. And we want to work closely with the new Terrain system. Uh, there was a talk yesterday by Mike Belfort about Terrain. I encourage everybody to look at that to get further details on it. We also want to do faster binary serialization. Uh, I won't go into detail, I just did a talk on JSON serialization where I touch upon serialization a bit more. Um, so I encourage everybody to watch that talk. And then finally, not all our assets are streaming aware yet, so we do want to make them either turn them into assets or make sure that they use the file streaming system directly. Um, but this may mean that we have to make more invasive changes. So one of the things that we're considering is that the uh, asset manager currently associates a single asset with a single file, and we were looking for maybe turning that into a situation where uh, multiple files can be associated with a single asset. 
If you're interested in talking more about streaming uh, or want to know more about the file streaming and the asset streaming in particular, I encourage everybody to go to O3E's Discord. If you're looking for me in particular, my name is on the screen. And with that, I hope to see everybody on Discord and thank you for watching.